All right, guys, welcome to your first video. This one is on introduction to chemistry. You should have your guided notes out in front of you to complete as we move through this. So the essential question is, how is life organized at the atomic level? So one of the things we need to know about life is that life has levels of complexity. And it starts with your simplest and smallest levels, which is where we begin this year. So the atomic and the subatomic level. All matter, which is the name for all of the stuff that makes up the universe, is made up of atoms. That includes all biological matter, so what we'll really be focusing on this entire year. Those combine to make molecules, groups of molecules combine to make cells, and so on, all the way up to our levels. Now you'll notice as we move up these levels, you get increasingly complex. So molecules are going to be combinations of a lot of different atoms doing a lot of different things and creating unique properties. Same thing with cells, a lot of different molecules with unique properties coming together to make a complex form. There are levels that are larger than an organism, and we will get to those at the end of the year. So some terminology that you've come across most, more than likely, excuse me, in middle school that you need to be familiar with so we can make sure we're on the same page as we move into this are element and compound. So an element is a pure substance made up of only one type of atom. What that means is if you look at these images over here, you notice that we have a bunch of red circles, and these are meant to represent atoms. Because they're all red, they're showing that it's the same element. So these all have the exact same properties as one another, being the same element. Some elements don't like to stand alone as just a single atom. They actually like to group up in pairs, and we call these diatomic elements. These are molecules. So you can have a molecule of an element, but it has to be the same element attached to itself. Now, a compound is two or more different elements chemically combined. So right down here, this image represents a compound, and they're showing you here that you have two different elements attached to one another, making it a compound. One of the things we'll be doing a lot of in our organic molecules unit is reading chemical formulas. So you need to be able to look at these and interpret them to figure out how many molecules you have, how many atoms are present. So from you reading the periodic table, you guys should know that every element has one or two letter symbols to represent it. But of those one or two letters, only one of them is going to be capitalized. So the easy way when looking at a molecular formula to figure out how many elements are being shown is you just count the capital letters. Now, a lot of these will have intuitive sort of names, so their abbreviations, their one or two letters will make sense. Like, for example, nitrogen is N. Nitrogen starts with N, makes sense. A lot of elements, though, are based on the Latinate meanings for those. Like, for example, uh, what's a good one? Uh, silver. Silver is based on the Latin word argentium, which means silver. So that's why we use AG to represent it. All right, so let's do a little bit of practice. So if you look down here, I have NH3. So I can tell just by looking at this that I have two elements being shown because I can see one capital N, one capital H, nitrogen, hydrogen. Over here, even though I have four letters, I count my capitals, I see that Ca, which is calcium, is one element, and Cl, which is chlorine, is another element. So four letters, but it's still only two elements being shown. Now, to determine the number of elements that are present in each compound, you have to look at the subscript. So sub means below. So these are going to be numbers that are written below your element symbols, your atomic symbols. Now, with right here, NH3, which is ammonium, if you look at the end, there's no number written down here. So just like in math, when there's no number, you assume it's a one. So that means there's one nitrogen, and over here I see a three next to hydrogen, so there are three hydrogens. These do not distribute, meaning that this doesn't mean because it's here, that also means there are three nitrogens. The subscript only goes with the letter that immediately precedes it. So over here, same thing. We have an invisible one on our calcium, so one calcium and three chlorine atoms. So now you guys try. So number one, how many elements are found in C8H9NO2? Good, hopefully you were able to count your capitals. You get one, two, three, four, so four different elements. How about the next one? How many elements are found in Al203? So hopefully you were able to get, even though there's two letters right here, you only have one capital. So Al, this is aluminum, it's one element, and then O, oxygen, is two. So there are two elements here. And this right here, Al203, is actually the chemical formula for aluminum foil. Number three, how many atoms of carbon, which is element C, are in C6H12O6? 
Good, so hopefully you were able to get that there are six, and you figure that out by looking at the subscript that immediately follows your element symbol of C right here. And this right here, you're going to learn to love this molecule. This is glucose, sugar. The other terms we need to be familiar with for the year are atom and molecule. So an atom is the basic unit of an element and is the building block of all matter. So when you see a single unit of an element, that is an atom. Molecules are just going to be two or more atoms chemically combined. So right here, remember on our first slide when we talked about diatomic elements, so elements that like to pair up, they don't want to be by themselves as atoms. These are molecules just because it's two or more atoms. So something doesn't have to be made of different elements in order to be a molecule. And over here, we have molecules of a compound. So again, still a molecule. Both of these are, even though this one's of an element and this one's of a compound. So the subscript we know tells you the number of atoms of an element. There's another number you need to be aware of, and that's the coefficient. The coefficient is going to tell you the number of molecules in that compound. So if we go back to what we learned before, we know that CO2, so I have two elements right here. There's an invisible one after my carbon telling me there's one, and I have two oxygens. However, this coefficient right here, this big three in the front, tells me, and we should know, CO2, carbon dioxide, tells me that I have three carbon dioxides, meaning that this is what it would look like if I were going to draw it out. So one, two, three molecules of CO2. Each molecule, though, has that one carbon, two oxygens. So again, here's our other example. We're using glucose again. So C6H12O6, that is how many atoms are in each of these. The number up front coefficient tells me that I have two of those molecules. Now to figure out your total number of atoms. So if I asked you how many atoms of carbon are in 3CO2, what you need to do is distribute. Now the way you distribute is, remember there's an imaginary one right here. So what's three times one carbon atom. Well, it's one, two, three. Easy peasy. Now to figure it out for oxygen, you're going to distribute that three to the two. So three times two gives me six oxygens. And I can check that over here again. Here, any? One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So over here again, to figure out my carbons, I would take my two and multiply it times six. It tells me I have 12 carbons. Two times eight, sorry, two times 12 for my hydrogens gives me 24. Hopefully you figure out how I'm doing this. So you just multiply your subscript and your coefficient to figure out total number of atoms for that element. So now you practice. Number one, so H2O, water. Number one, how many molecules of water are there? Good, so hopefully you're able to get that this coefficient five, remember this big number up front, that tells you how many molecules there are. Number two, how many atoms of oxygen are there? Good, so remember, ooh, we have an imaginary one right here, so you have to distribute that five times one, so there are five oxygens in five waters, molecules. Number three, how many atoms of hydrogen are there? Good, so we just did oxygen, so hopefully you got this one, so we just do five times two, that tells me there's a total of 10 hydrogens in five water molecules. All right, so I know you guys did this in middle school, so let's see how much you remember. So here are your subatomic particles. We know that we have positive ones that are located in the nucleus. We have negative ones that are located in your orbitals or clouds. Those are going to be outside the nucleus. And last, these are the sort of teal green ones right here. Those are going to be neutral. So they're made up of one positive and one negative charge, making them have no charge overall. And they're found in your nucleus. So see if you can remember, what is the name of your positive nucleus charge subatomic particle? Hopefully you're able to remember that's your proton. All right, how about next one, neutral one found in the nucleus? That's your neutron. Easy to remember because neutron, neutral, no charge. And hopefully you should be able to get this one. Your negative ones that are found in the clouds on the outside, those are your electrons. All right, we're going to pause here for now. We'll come back and finish this in video two.